All right, tonight brings the first presidential debates of the 2016 election season. It's a big, big night for many. Many of these candidates will be looking to grab more attention than they've already received because one guy has been getting all the attention. It's this guy right here, Donald Trump. Jeb Bush, Scott Walker, none of the candidates have broken into double digits in recent polls. You want to look at the numbers? This really is telling the story. Donald Trump, 23.4%, an astoundingly high number at this stage of the game. Right behind him is Jeb Bush, but look at how the difference is here. 12%. Scott Walker in third place, 10.2. Now, this is an average of uh, the polls selected by Fox News to come up with these averages. Mike Huckabee at 6.6. .6. But look at the drop off here from 23.4 to 6.6. .6. And then you really start to see it go down. Dr. Ben Carson. Of course, who was critical of President Barack Obama at the National Prayer Breakfast, he goes to 5.8. Ted Cruz, Senator Ted Cruz, Marco Rubio, 5.4. Rand Paul, Chris Christie, 3.4. And just squeaking in is John Kasich at 3.2. A lot of people thought Rick Perry would be there. He's not. All right, so let's go to the next panel. This is the, uh, the cocktail hour, the children's table. Uh, happy hour team. This is the earlier uh, broadcast that they're going to have. They wanted to include all of the candidates. There's 17 of them. Rick Perry, who didn't make the top cut, 1.8%. Remember Donald Trump at 23? He's at 1.8. And the numbers just go down. Rick Santorum, Bobby Jindal, Carly Fiorina, Lindsey Graham, who, of course, uh, beat up his cell phone. Look at the numbers now. 0.7. Jim Gilmore, 0.6. And former New York Governor George Pataki at 0.2%. That's your field. It is a crowded field. Uh, it'll be an interesting night to watch both broadcasts to see what exactly happens and what these numbers, whether these numbers bear out, what's really going to happen on stage, and whether Donald Trump will indeed dominate. Let's check in with Lisa. Yeah, that is, those are all questions that we want to pose to our political analyst and friend John Dady. And good morning. Good morning. Okay, so first of all, how in the world are any of these candidates going to break, break out of a pack based on the format that we've already seen is going to happen tonight? Well, there's two types of strategies, and that in lies the problem. Strategy number one, do you try to break out by coming up with a great soundbite or maybe attacking Trump or for whatever reason? But the other strategy, which is the most commonplace in any type of debate, and that is do no harm. And mm -hmm. I think most of them are going to take that, that strategy because if they do no harm but get their visibility up because of this debate, really their goal is to finish well in Iowa and New Hampshire after the mm -hmm. first of the year. So they want the visibility of this, but they don't want it as happened to Rick Perry in the last election for him to make a misstep that everybody remembers. Right, we were just seeing, we just replayed that you video bet. a second ago. So let's talk about Rick Perry. You know, lots of people thought he would be in the top 10, you know, and now he here he is finding himself in this quote unquote B team group. Isn't that going to be a more interesting group to watch? What are your thoughts on the B team group? Well, Rick Perry, first of all, just barely got bumped. He came in number 11, so he did go into the uh, B team group. Uh, let me say, uh, let me give him kudos. He's handled it well, unlike some of his other six, because he's been positive. When somebody said, are you upset? He says, I'm looking forward to discussing the issues. Very, very smart. I think for some of these candidates, the B team group could be good because the media is still going to have to comment on it and compare it. They're going to have to make some comments when they talk about the main debate tomorrow morning. Watch Carly Fiorina. She could shine. And I think it's to her benefit that she's in the second group because it's the only woman, private sector, mm -hmm. all these things that make her different. I think she has a very good chance, whether or not she gets a good soundbite. Uh, so I think it was to her benefit, believe it or not. Sure. That's, that's different than the conventional wisdom with some pundits, but that's what I believe. No, I, I think that makes sense. She would be the only female. Lots of people are saying that the Republican Party are looking for these outsiders, you know, these people that haven't been long-term politicians, and she certainly is that. The A group is some big names, mm -hmm. but the conventional wisdom is they are going to get lost with the Trump factor. Um, you know, we talk, we talk a lot about Trump, and, you know, he is a, a very loud, guy he has you know he says what's on his mind but the the traditional front runner here Jeb Bush how does he show up tonight how does he make an impact that outweighs that of Donald Trump uh, strong and steady. I mean, I think that's his theme, to show that I am the elder statesman, I am the leader of the party, I have been around, I've been governor of very successful, uh, mm -hmm. successful governor of a state, et cetera. I think that's it. He knows that he can't outflash Trump. He knows he can't outsoundbite Trump, et cetera. And he's smart by not even trying.
Right. Uh, he did have that gaffe earlier this week, and you were talking about do no harm here. I mean, do you think the other the other um, candidates on that stage tonight in the in that ten that that field of ten? Do you think they attack? Jeb Bush? I don't think so. And, and again, I think uh, if they're smart, they will try to be positive and say their policies. Because mm -hmm. again, you know, uh, with we got Iowa coming up at sure. first year. If they attack Jeb Bush, and then three months from now he's not the front runner, et cetera, that would have been wasted capital. Yeah. Um, let's talk to you about um, the, just the format in general tonight. You know, we heard from Fox News and the RNC that each candidate's going to get a minute. And then if your name is mentioned, you're going to get 30 seconds to rebut. How in the world are these politicians going to get anything accomplished? And will we see any kind of actual real policy issues being talked about? Well, that's a great question because of the 10 candidates, the only one who really hasn't come out so far with any policy plans has been Trump. Mm -hmm. And the media has been on him on that. But uh, you just nailed it on the head with one minute. No, you're not going to see any hard policy. Uh, they'd be dumb to try to condense it again. What they'll try to condense into one minute uh, is a soundbite. Mm -hmm. Let me, uh, here's two interesting things about the format tonight. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting that not only did they pick the top 10, but they're putting the 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 position on stage with the the standing of the poll with right. Trump in the middle isn't that going to be interesting to watch real interesting now here's another little interesting trivia when Carlos was going over the percentage numbers of the top ten right think about this for a second they picked it based on poll numbers but in all of those polls there's a margin of error of between three and four percent so do this math <laughs> right the person who came in number ten or even the person who didn't finish Right, in the top up, 10, right. Ended up in the B group, et cetera. If you put in that margin of error, they theoretically could be in the number five position. Right. They could be in the top five, but they got bumped to the B group or they barely made it. So that's why I had a little problem with the, with this formula that the media is using. Right, with the formula. But the, the bottom line is it is what it is. Who are you? I mean, Trump is going to get the headlines. There's no question. But who else are you looking forward to who should the people at home be looking forward to seeing and listening to tonight two people Walker and Kasich mm -hmm. uh, Kasich because some, some pundits agree that he's probably the most qualified broad breadth of experience really a policy wonk but they can articulate it and that's rare and he's in his hometown uh, this home state yeah. Ab abso absolutely yeah this this was big that it was huge for him mm -hmm. he would have uh, been hurt if he made the B team the other one is Walker because again mm -hmm. Walker's considered very stable you know, a lot of Republicans love him because he beat back the unions in his home state, those type of things. But he's got to not worry about Trump. He's got to worry about Bush. He's the one that wants to overcome the Bush because they are basically neck, neck and neck. neck. All right, John, always great to see you. Thank you so much for Thank coming you. in. We'll see you tomorrow, right? Very good. Correct. All right. We have